Our movie begins with Anton, a teenage slacker, gets stuck in a mysterious twist of fate, dragging his family and friends into a hellish nightmare. Mr. and Mrs. Tobias, Anton's parents, retire for the day after decorating the house for Halloween. Upon switching the lights off, Mrs. Tobias screams upon seeing a glowing note on the ceiling stating that someone is under the bed. Mr. Tobias looks under the bed, but there's nothing strange, so he comments that it's their son's prank. Mrs. Tobias disagrees since it's out of character for Anton. They hear thumps somewhere in the house, so the wife pushes her husband to check it out. Moments later, she hears the strange noise, so she heads out with Bones, their cat, to look for her husband and son. After blowing out the jack-o'-lantern's candle, she slips on a flashlight and discovers blood on the floor. Afraid, she runs to the bedroom to call 911, but the phone is yanked by something. As she picks it up, she's dragged under the bed while she frightfully screams. When morning comes, Bones wakes Anton up, and he trudges out of the attic. While preparing breakfast, he calls for his mom to ask for milk. Getting no response, he watches TV while smoking, missing the news about a series of incidents where people are taken out. As he smokes his goods, he calls his friends to ask for a delivery, but they hang up after saying he has to get it himself. Therefore, the slacker heads to his friend's house. Mick and Peanut sit idly as their friend demands some pot. Mick advises him to do something productive and have an ambition, but Anton is firm to live his life slacking. His friend asks him if he plans to continue it until his parents kick him out, so Anton remembers that he hasn't seen his parents for days. Peanub jokes that they may have perished as someone lurks in their town, killing random people. Suddenly, they hear a motorcycle, so Anton excitedly looks out the window to see Molly, his crush. His friends encourage him to make a move since he has adored her for a while, suggesting Anton to ask her to their school's Halloween ball. Finally, he musters the courage and heads out upon seeing the woman's music book she dropped on the road. He takes the book and rings Molly's doorbell. The woman turns gleeful upon seeing her book, but Anton anxiously shoves it to her and silently leaves. Meanwhile, in Utah, a cop escorts a nun named Sister Debye to a cell. However, the detainee is already staring blankly as his hand seems lifeless. The nun storms out of the police station and removes her habit, mumbling she's lost it again. She enters her trailer truck and hangs her costume as she scans the news of the recent incidents of people getting eliminated. As she marks the incident locations on her map, she realizes these are points in a pentagram. On the other hand, Anton returns from grocery shopping when two men suddenly pounce on him, revealing his former schoolmates, who are now cops, McMacy and Ruck. Then, they search him for illicit substances, but can only find a lighter and a plastic bag. They threaten him to use these as evidence, but the slacker points out they're wrongfully arresting him. Therefore, the cops drop the plastic on the ground and write a ticket with a fine for littering. Afterward, Anton busies himself by combining some herbs, as suggested by Pina, to replace his substance. He suddenly hears strange sounds in the house, so he mutes the TV. Hearing nothing, he turns up the volume and lights up the herb combination he wrapped in paper. He takes in the herbs and coughs terribly, so he washes his mouth. He prepares a sandwich while his eyes remain fixed on a music video, failing to see the blood on the knife he's using to spread mayonnaise. After having a big bite, he finally notices the bloodied knife and concludes that the outlaw is in his house. Only then does he observe his surroundings and sees bones beside an eyeball. In fright, he hugs Duke, their dog, and drags it along as he explores the house. He freaks out upon seeing a silhouette of a man at the door, so he runs to hide under the blanket in his parents' room. Anton tries to grab the phone while his head is still under the blanket. In haste, he presses a buzzer that surprises him, making him see the note on the ceiling. He frantically runs out, yelling that the culprit is under the bed. He miserably slips on an umbrella, bumping into the jack-o'-lanterns, only to discover that his parents' bodies are hidden in them. He throws up outside the house, and someone suddenly grabs his shoulders. He's startled but becomes relieved upon seeing his friends. Panicked, he pushes them inside the house to disclose the events, but the friends only notice the TV and jams with the music video. Anton points toward his parents' body, and his friends freak out. Peanub pounds on Mr. Tobias's chest, imitating the CPR he saw in Baywatch. Mick spots a torn piece of clothing on the man's hand, and Anton realizes it's his, so he discreetly distances himself while exploring the surroundings, and discovers his name written in blood on the floor. However, Mick notices his friend's torn shirt, and Anton discovers that his right hand has glow-in-the-dark paint just like the one used in his parents' room, so he concludes that he's the culprit. Immediately, Mick calls 911, but Anton yanks the phone away. Mick hides behind the fridge and jokingly offers alcohol to his friend, but Anton takes it and breaks the bottle. Soon, Mick's body falls with the broken glass bottle stuck on his head. Anton panics as he can't understand what's happening to him. 
Keenub tries to leave, but the culprit chases him, being led by his right hand that he can't control. Anton instructs Peanub to go to the basement to escape while he tries to stop his uncontrollable hand. Peanub runs past him, but as he's about to exit the basement, his friend throws a saw blade in his direction, decapitating him. Afterward, Anton holds his right hand and trudges to the couch. He tries to watch cartoons, but his right hand persistently grabs the remote control. Bones jumps onto him, but his right hand throws the cat out of the house. It coincidentally lands in front of Molly's house, so he follows the cat to retrieve it. However, his hand presses the doorbell, and the woman opens the door. Molly approaches him to inquire about his appearance, so he alibis that he got into a fight with Bones. When Molly turns around, his hand tries to grab her. Anton does his best to hold his hand down and explains vaguely that he's different. His crush misunderstands that he's pertaining to his shy personality and tells him that it's alright. When Anton's going to confess, his hand covers his mouth and Molly invites him in. The slacker uses this opportunity to get along with his crush by praising her music. He succeeds to lighten the atmosphere, but as Molly turns her back, his hand takes a knife. Anton struggles to stop himself and tells Molly he has to go since he's dangerous, but the woman doesn't believe him. Suddenly, his hand grabs Molly's back, which impresses the woman. She pushes Anton onto the bed and kisses him. However, his right hand keeps strangling his crush, so the slacker ties it to the bed, and they share a passionate evening. Anton leaves and they set to see each other tomorrow at the Halloween dance. At home, Anton buries his parents and friends. He gives them his last words but suddenly hears a grunt. Then, Mick and Peanub complain that they can't breathe and ask for his help. Thinking he's hallucinating, Anton smokes, but an arm suddenly grabs him, and his friends rise from the grave. Peanub's decapitated body holds the shovel, so Anton backs away in shock, but his friend's head suddenly speaks, startling him. Then, the body hits his head, and he faints. The following day, Anton wakes up in the attic thinking everything's a dream. He sees his friends in the living room, but he sees Mick with a bottle stuck on his head and Peanub's severed head. Mick expresses disappointment for his life being taken by his best friend, but he forgives him. Anton asks how they're here, so they jokingly explain that they saw a tunnel with a light on its end, but they heard weird music, and women called them, so they followed their voice and found themselves undead. Anton's right hand pulls his hair, so his friends ask what's happening. The slacker can only conclude his hand is possessed, so his friends tell him they know somebody who might have an idea. Anton finds Randy, a satanic music lover, but the man's moment with a lady is interrupted, so he angrily leaves. The slacker chases after him but fails. He disguises himself as a crew in the burger shop and waits for Randy in the drive through Anton asks for his help, explaining his hand is possessed, so Randy advises him to keep his hands busy, stating that idle hands are the devil's playground. Afterward, Anton returns home and begins knitting. Mick comments that the advice may have been metaphorical, but the slacker ignores him. Meanwhile, McMacy and Ruck patrol the area and notice the blasting music in Tobias's residence. They peek into the window and see Anton with his undead friends, so they conclude that the slacker is the outlaw on the loose. They barge into his house to arrest him, but Anton doesn't stop knitting and asks his friends what to do. Keenub responds, shocking McMacy, so he shoots the head. The undead teenager continues speaking, causing the cops to panic. Anton volunteers to be arrested so that he'll be locked in. He offers his hands to be cuffed, but the cops insist him to stop knitting. They bicker back and forth until the hand strikes Ruck with a knitting needle. Then, the hand grabs the cop's taser and electrocutes McMacy until he perishes. Desperate to stop the hand, Anton goes to the kitchen, and the worried Mick follows, instructing Peanub to take his head and come with him. The undead enters the kitchen, and Peanub places his head on the table. Mick stops Anton from his plan of cutting his hand off with a portable cutter, but the slacker is determined. Unfortunately, it fails, so he asks Mick to hand him the carver, but his friend plays with it and unplugs it, so he takes a chopping knife from the drawer. The right hand avoids his every attempt, so Peanub bites it down to hold it in place and Anton finally succeeds. Afterward, Mick takes a flat iron and cauterizes his stump. The shocked Anton remains speechless as his friend wraps his arm with cloth and plastic. Then, the undead head out to find medicine for him, reassuring their friend they got his back. However, Anton reads a note written in blood that what he's done is a wrong choice. Realizing the hand is still alive, he takes the chopping knife to hunt for it, but Molly calls out to him for their date. The hand grabs Anton's face, and after struggling, he successfully places it in the microwave and watches it cook. Relieved, he meets Molly, who thinks his disheveled appearance is his costume and ushers him away from the place. 
Moments later, the undead return with a first aid kit. Mick can't bear Peanub's head messing the place, so he attaches the head to its body using a meat fork. They head to the microwave to heat their snacks, but they release the hand instead. Meanwhile, Anton tells Molly to wait for him at the dance since his parents are coming, and he must first clean the place. He rushes home only to discover his undead friends chilling, and the hand is gone. Concurrently, Randy sees Debai in a bowling alley, and he approaches the woman to hit on her. As they share some drinks, Debai tells him that she's from a line of priestesses with a mission to stop an evil hand from taking people's lives and bringing an innocent soul to the netherworld. Randy relays Anton's situation to her, and they hurry to meet him. Meanwhile, Anton discovers a bloody note on Molly's fence saying she's the target, so the slacker and his friends head to the dance. Simultaneously, Randy and Demi arrive seeing the three steal Randy's monster truck. The priestess frantically runs to them, but Anton, who has no experience driving a manual car, hits her, and she flies away. Randy attends to Demi, and she luckily survives. Concurrently, the evil hand finds another two victims. Soon, the friends arrive at the party where Molly is waiting. Mick and Peanub enter the dance hall, and Tanya, Molly's friend, praises their makeup. Peanub invites her to dance, and despite Mick's reminders that they're supposed to help Anton, the decapitated undead goes to play. Simultaneously, Debai and Randy arrive at the dance while the hand sharpens its claws. Debai bumps into Anton, and the priestess explains that she knows how to stop it. She takes out a special dagger and strikes Anton. Fortunately, the slacker manages to evade. Debai brawls with Anton, and Randy watches them. She declares that the host of evil should be eliminated, and Randy assists her in subduing the slacker because Anton stole his car. Anton shows them his arm and declares that the hand is after his girlfriend. Debai mentions that evil will take Molly to hell by midnight, and they only have six minutes left. The group heads to the ballroom, unaware that the hand is clinging to the door. Anton goes upstage to announce that there's a killer nearby. He then shows them his arm, explaining that it will end them all. The people throw things at him in disbelief while the hand removes the door's knob. Mick and Peanub testify, but the ladies giggle at them. The band singer pushes Anton and is about to start again when the hand lands on his head and rips his hair. Chaos erupts and the people rush outside. Tanya drags Molly to an air vent to escape, unaware that the hand is after them. Soon, Tanya panics upon reaching a dead end due to powered ventilation blades, so Molly takes her friend's shoe to block the rotation. She propels down with a rope and urges Tanya to follow, but the hand wraps the rope on her neck and pushes her down. The hand removes the shoe, and the edges turn, entangling the rope and severing Tanya. Molly runs away after witnessing the incident, but the hand throws a bottle at her head, making her faint. Shortly after, the undead sees Tanya's remains in the air vent, so they head back. Meanwhile, Anton enters the props room and pounces on some puppets upon noticing a movement. However, the hand attacks him from behind while wearing a puppet costume. After struggling, Anton stomps on the hand and is about to end it but the air vent cover drops on him, revealing his undead friends. Anton angrily blames them for letting the hand go, but Molly's screams interrupt him. They find her tied to a car while the evil hand pulls the lever to sandwich Molly between the vehicle and the ceiling. The friends try to stop the hand, but they are miserably losing, so Mick finds something helpful and discovers Peanub's uniquely modified bomb. Mick encourages his friends to smoke to be stronger. Peanub follows, but the smoke seeps through his neck. Upon seeing this, Anton slurps the smoke and blows it in the evil hand's puppet costume. The enemy collapses due to overdose, releasing the lever. The car stops just as Molly's nose touches the ceiling. The evil hand falls out of the puppet costume, and Anton struggles to put the lever down to release Molly. The hand jumps to attack him just before Debai and Randy enter the room. The priestess throws her dagger toward the hand, striking it at the center, and lands on Mick's chest. Defeated, the evil hand turns into a puff of smoke. The three friends become disappointed regarding its demise, and Mick criticizes how lame its end is. Debai accomplishes her mission, so she drags Randy to spend private time with him. Anton thanks Mick and removes the dagger stuck into his heart to untie Molly. Finally, the lovers kiss each other under the lifted car. Relieved, Mick wants to get a hit of the smoke, so he yanks the device from his friend, making Peanub lose balance and release the lever. Suddenly, the car falls on Anton, and Molly screams, startling the undead. Peanub washes his hands from the accident, and the door opens with a blinding light. The two follow the light, and Peanub brings his device along. They pause, and Mick asks Anton if he's coming before the light engulfs them. Soon after, Molly scribbles I love you on Anton's bandage, as the slacker is now wrapped like a mummy on a hospital bed. A nurse arrives to check on him when he notices Mick and Peanub behind her. He greets them happily, and the two tell him they're his guardian angels. 
The nurse says he's delirious due to the meds and reminds the girlfriend that visiting hours are over. Left alone, Peanub tells Anton their job is to ensure he remains good. The slacker genuinely thanks his friends, and the angels leave for some snacks after turning off the lights. Afterward, Anton frantically screams, seeing a note on the ceiling that someone is under his bed. Meanwhile, Peanub makes fun of their friend's screams and asks Mick if they'll tell their friend they're the ones who wrote the note. Mick says no, and they head out to play while Anton's screams echo in the hospital. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.